Hello there, everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here. Of course, in TNO, the last is of here, which we're playing is Goring. Uh, but we're doing Fob Lao, finally, after the fall of France. It's only Iberia stands to the west of the Reich. Like the Italians, the Iberian nations were once our allies during the Second World War and quickly became our opponents after the establishment of the New Order. To ensure the security, or to secure the western border of the war when with Italy begins, Iberia must be brought to knee as soon as possible. Meanwhile in Iberia, the Iberian Union has ceased to exist not, long too, not too long ago, leaving two vulnerable nations to face from military forces alone. Therefore, this new military operation, named Fall Blau, consists of two parts, with each part dealing with one nation. So we'll be enjoying the blue ocean and golden sunshine of, of the Atlantic on the western beach of the Iberian Peninsula, ensuring at the success of Fall Blau. We might need to reorganize France, though. Mm. But I want to take out Spain first. We're getting an entrance, though. Operation Philip. Thirty years ago, Spain was just like us before, consumed by the flames of civil war. Thanks for our assistance, though. They finally managed to get rid of the communist ghosts, but these ungrateful Spaniards quickly betrayed our trust, making their alliance with other traitors in Europe. But now, as we finally recovered from the German civil war and started our grand, grand conquest of Europe, Spain must meet their punishment as well. Named after the famous King Philip of Spain, a military operation has been drafted to help us conquer that nation. The end of Spain will be the beginning of a new stage in the new order reborn. Rebuild the Gustav. The Spanish people believe that they are impregnable forts, and mountains will grant them safety and protection for troops, but they seem to forget that there was a destructive superweapon in their army. Aim for the Maginot Line. The Schwer Gustav, built by Kurab, was capable of destroying any forts in the world. Though, during the fall of France, that railway artillery didn't come in handy during, due to strategic reasons. Its power and had never become obsolete. By rebuilding such a mighty beast, there will be no obstacles between us and Madrid for the hair. The Spanish defenders going, are going to die in desperation when their shelters, which are brought to Thought to be indestructible are blown into pieces and dust. Agitate anti-Portuguese sentiment. The chaos for Spain and or chance for the Spain and Portuguese to aid each other in times of need will, of course, decrease. Being the only two remaining Iberian nations, Spain and Portugal share a long and complicated history between them. However, in recent years they've been on better terms with each other than ever before, especially in recent days after the Second World War. Despite such close ties, the so-called Iberian divorce that happened not so long ago has proven that there still exists some sort of distrust between them, which gives us opportunity to provoke their hostil hostilities towards each other. We can spread fake messages about how the Portuguese betrayed the Spaniards' plan of a united Iberia and subverted the Union. With agitated national sentiment, the cooperation between these two nations can be perfectly avoided. Operation Antonio. In history, Portugal was never a friend of we German people, and with their existence at the westernmost part of Europe, we can never make our attacks on other nations without worrying about our back. Thus, a military operation against Portugal is a significant part of the Fall Blau, and will have far-reaching influence on our future uh, strategic deployment. Forty years before, during the Portuguese succession crisis, Antonio, prior of Creto, was crowned as the King of Portugal and led their people against the Spanish intruders, was defeated and forced to exile in the end, which made the Spaniard overlord of uh, Portugal. Out of 400 years later, the operation named after him will bring them to, their, to, our, to our Keens as well, and our march won't stop for a while until we reach the western coast of the Iberian Peninsula. Agitate anti-Spanish sentiment. Being the only two, uh, is this one? Yeah, so this is basically the same thing as we read earlier over here. We can remind the Portuguese of the misery under the Spanish rule hundreds of years ago. May their hatred be, will never be forgotten and continue prickling their proud hearts. Yes, please, that'd be great. There you go, we're not even going to use that stuff, but whatever. Only a billion, huh? Well, that's a billion we're going to need. Now we're going to take out Spain first, hopefully. Keep the OFN at bay. Um, ever since the victory in the Civil War, the Americans have been watching and plotting against the Reich due to their ties with South American countries and Portugal itself. They are likely to make intervention in a planned war against Portugal. To avoid that situation, some radicals in the Wehrmacht and the government have proposed that we should send the Kriegsmarine to the Atlantic to warn the OFN about the consequences of intervention. Though such a proposal seems too risky at a current situation, rejecting it may enrage the militaries from the Reich. We can only hope that by doing this, the Americans don't want to take a risk of clashing with our forces and withdraw their influence from Europe and reorganize France. A former enemy of the German nation, France may be the most failed nation in Western Europe after the Second World War. Caught in its never-ending dilemma, every aspect of France seems to be in complete chaos due to its inefficient government, the resistance, and the SS beyond the shadow, which makes them continue to lose territories and stops them from doing anything useful in the pact. Considering our need to conquer and rule over Iberia, the current position of France and the Reich must be totally abolished. New plans have been proposed and the governments of France will be forced to resign, replaced by the trustful generals in our army. From now on, there will be no, no, nothing called France, but another military revolt called Ok. Zetanin in this world. Military's demand. We're doing one all right. Could use more air aerial stuff. So there you go. GRWI. We're looking pretty good. We got rid of Das Liger, even though we spent all that stuff. So doing that. Or, oh, this is a social population shrink by 28 million. That's just because we got rid of a lot of population in like Russia and whatnot. 
with a nuclear arsenal, we could wipe out 104% of humanity. It's not bad. Um, agricultural yields increased by 0.21%. Overall, not bad. Well, our economy is gro not growing. It's shrinking slightly. Yearly deficit has actually done better um, overall. So, And up next, jet transports. Sure, I like global supply range. Why not? Yeah, why not? Our ships are already out in sea, already doing what they need to do. Which is fantastic. We have no fuel, but what else is new? And you're gonna go up by two, and you're gonna keep doing this. Daily gain, 4,900. Not enough, obviously. Good luck. Um, after all preparations done before, now the time to finish your military campaigns in Iberia has come. Being the only remaining nation in Iberia, the conquest of Portugal will be a great shining point of a war on the Western Front. With the fall of Spain, Portugal will have to face our full-scale offensive alone. By both sea and land, the troops of the Wehrmacht are now mo moving to the border between us and Portugal. The Portuguese will pay for the betrayal of the Reich before, and Lisbon will take damage equal to the famous earthquake in their history. The fall blow is going to have a splendid ending show when we hold our victory parade before the famous Mostero dos Geronimos. Oh, give Shona a taste of his own medicine. For a long time, while other generals try their best to reduce casualties during battle, Shona has been his for his fanaticism about mass assault doctrines, even when his men are facing enemy's fortifications. There's a widely whispered explanation of his paranoia that he just wants to get rid of those who, whose loyalty towards him are suspected. Though such a uh, story sounds hard to uh, confirm, the Fuhrer himself still appreciates Shona's genius in the story regardless of the personal relationship. And now, during the inv invasion of Iberia, reports about the fortifications in the hills caught the Fuhrer's attention. Those forts surely are hard to attack and occupy, so why don't we make them make sure his loyalists deal with them? No matter what their plan is, our orders will be simple and clear. Keep charging until those forts are occupied or destroyed. And the greatest part of this plan is Shona will have no reason to reject our orders. Thinking of that point, a little smile creeps across the Fuhrer's mouth. Shona was always a proponent of dealing with dissident or dissenters. By sending them to the front line, the same principle can be applied to the disloyal, disloyal officers. Why not? Making an entrance. Um, after all the preparations are done, now the time comes to make an entrance to Iberia has come. Being the lesser one, Portugal will be the first target or second target in our campaign. Without any help from Americans as well as Spain, the little nation won't have any chance to fight against us. Now the landing ship is proceeding to the Atlantic waters accomplished by the Kriegsmarine and Lufthansa. The Portuguese will pay for the betrayal of the Reich before, and Lisbon will take damage equal to that, of course, of the famous earthquake in history. And most importantly, part is with the success of Operation Antonio, we'll be able to launch our attack upon Spain from two sides when the Operation Philip begins. Well, oh, we landed. Nice. Now send everybody in. Go in and have some fun. Anything here for tactics? Breakthrough. Yes, it's fine. Ooh, loot Iberia. Yes. Eventually. I want all of Iberia in one hole. Together. Losses. 200 versus 25,000. Not bad. So, Hobsrauer Stostrup Company. Some of the army question our military plan about Iberia, and say even Napoleon was defeated in the Iberian Peninsula. What they fail to understand is that technology is one of the most important factors of war, and an advanced technology will help us avoid such humiliation that Napoleon suffered the helicopters. Being able to transfer and deploy troops to almost anywhere on the battlefield swiftly, our research in them has made great breakthroughs in recent years. During Fall Blau, our most advanced helicopters will be organized as the Hubschrauber Stostrup companies and lead our forces right on the peninsula. Our enemies are going to freak out when they witness our crows of death surely appearing above their heads and drop our soldiers down. Hello. Ooh. So you just see these. Oh, task force has been defeated. Great. Hey, 900 more destroyers have been sunk too. Beautiful. Convoys go bye bye. Yes, yes. I don't mind using an occasional plane for all that, so. Well, that's helicopters. What about the other side here? Marine Stoster Company. Some in the army have questioned our military plan about Iberia and even say Napoleon was defeated on the hills on Iberian Peninsula. What well, the failure to understand is that strategy is one of the most important factors of war, and with proper strategy, there will be no need for the hair to face those strong forts directly. Instead, another kind of corps will help us break into the Iberia, the Marine Corps. Just like the way we conquered France, the best way to deal with enemy defenses is to bypass it. But this time we'll have to do it by sea rather than the land. Let's let the Iberians sleep well in the mountain fortifications. When they wake up, they'll be shocked 
behind their defenseless nations that have been swept away by our marines just through company. Uh, I'm going to use the helicopters. The elephant and the Portuguese blockade. Pablo is solidly underway. The division of what remains of Spain and Portugal is being implemented, and as a measure to put an end to future resistance, it is imperative that sea access be monitored and controlled, particularly Portugal's immense water border. An extensive overseas context and trade mean that this is an acutely poor section of our naval control, and it must be rectified. Uh, the Kriegsmarine has already put forward a number of monitor and blockade vessels, but it's clear that the fleets will need to be patressed in size if it were to be successful. The only question then is to determine the requisite size of the task force needed, and a proposal has been put forth. By redirecting a handful of other vessels from the trolls in the North Sea and Atlantic, we could possibly achieve an operational blockade. However, the Admiralty has stressed in no uncertain terms that this pittance of ships will not stop a determined foreign power from penetrating the naval cordon. Their request insists in truth the deployment of the fleets in the region will be direct redirected to create a floating wall that will ensure an absolute blockade of Portugal. Yet, such a massive fleet concentration of global flashpoints run the risk of engaging the globe's naval power as a challenge by America's navy that could arise and would have the potential to aspire into something far worse. Some fleets, nothing gets in or out. They should make do with what they can spare. They should make do with this, this time. Go straight for Andorra. It's fine. The Spaniards can't do anything against us. Some would say they're strength and power, but they didn't learn that. We need to build more refineries. Because we don't need the rubber, really, but we need the fuel. 5,500, huh? Just, just destroying convoys left and right. I <sighs> love it. Is that going very nice? Sure, why not? Ah. Very good. Spain, and then it'll be their turn. Oh, we can invade France. French state. And French state. Two French states. Oh. I'm mean, gonna send these guys, but still. Yeah, we can do Turkey again. Losses. Almost a third of a million. Beautiful. Well, you know what, for now, let's go with new silos. I'll go with that one next. Why not? Oh! Oh, you guys. 18 combat with main battle tanks, AFVs, APCs, locked. I'll be honest, these guys aren't as good as uh, what we currently use, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Look at that manpower we have now. Oh, 5 million. It's a beautiful thing. Is it? Oh, we didn't quite beat him yet. We'll get to, still get to Sevilla, but that's fine with us. And there you go. Bad supply, huh? Very hot. Makes sense. Hey, and we'll get Gibraltar too eventually. And we have him. Beautiful. Well, once it loads. Fantastic. And we have a little possession of Africa too. What's not to love? And then new nuclear cells will be the next thing we read, and then after that, what, this one done. Missing ships, huh? Shona's influence over our government and army has been a serious problem for a very long time. Though triggering a direct conflict with them will be unwise, wars brought us several chances to limit its power. Ever since its influence has reached too high at present, the invasion of Iberia will be an optimal chance for action. According to a military plan, many of our officers, including Shorner's loyalists, will be transported by ships. By proper arrangement, we can make some ship be filled with Shorner's men and then just disappear and see. Sea monsters, Iberian infiltrations, American spies, people may blame this accident on different names, and a horrific legend will be a perfect story for us. Shona surely won't get to notice a couple of ships with officers loyal to him going missing during this chaotic invasion. A new nuclear silos. Although we are loath to admit it, we need to address the state of our nuclear silos. In essence, many of our underground storage facilities have begun to decay. While the situation isn't critical, a substantial amount of work needs to be done to get our many launch sites in acceptable working order. Foundations need to be checked, missiles need to be maintained, and supplies and stockpiles need to be replenished, as well as many other minor things. Um, we can be satisfied with repairing our silos, but a few select officers have approached us with a more unconventional solution. Building and rebuilding our stockpile of nuclear missiles into an armaments force that could be launched anywhere at any time, perhaps? 
It is indeed something our engineers toyed with in the past, but in the end, the Reich decided that storing all of our nuclear armaments in cells was the best solution. However, with the stabilization of Germany and the United Pact, as well as the sudden influx of massive funding into the military, we can now, after decades of stagnation, consider affording a project to give our nuclear capacity the ability to strike from any part of German territory. Our missile cells are more than adequate. Mobility gives extra edge over our enemies. This is very true. Oh, that's gotten worse. But we actually have a surplus now. Look at that. That should be a very easy war to do. I love it. We still can make almost unlimited number of these divisions, which is fantastic. Finishing the job. And there we go. I mean, you can send all the support you want to them, but it's not going to do anything, you know. But now we've got to go to World War with France at the same time. Soldiers weren't quite ready, but i got to make sure we can do everything we need to do here uh, quickly enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, huh. task force, huh? Um, should probably do all that, too, just in case. And go and see what you can do. Just cutting down the Portuguese and French. I love it. Nope. Happy October, everybody. Ah, ten destroyers. Do we have any upgrades for our admirals? Mm. Oh, so you are in control of all this. Sword efficiency is extremely important. Um, honestly, I love the this stuff. Torpedo bombers and dive bombers. I love all this. Air attack, these are the exact same ones, but fighter, like, just in case on the open seas, we need that. Um, that's just important to have. Visibility doesn't help, but it's okay. Capital ships, do even more damage. I'm all about damage, man. Air top, spider, already pretty good at naval stuff. I'll keep making more. We'll actually make some subs eventually too. Actually, you know what? Since we're here, start making another um, naval dock here. You never have enough. 413 billion. Not bad. As we're slowly entering France once again, but this time from the southern portion. Ooh, pretty good. Just toy with them. That's all you have to do, just toy with them. Ah, uh, we'll do this one. Bunch for cruiser models. And let's go in to Lisbon. Coimbra? Ah. Advanced jet transports. Beautiful, my friends. The conquest of Iberia. In the chaos of the Iberian Wars, the victors emerge above all others. The most peculiar winner, the German Reich. Yes, it was not one of the many vying states in Iberia itself that has won out and restored some semblance of order into this region of chaos, but the war machine was a state that is a modern incarnation of Fuhrer Hermann Goring's Reich. The Iberian federal government, the Basque, the Catalans, the Portuguese, all of these and more fell beneath the advancing boots of the Wehrmacht and the falling bombs of the Luftwaffe. With every contender eliminated, Goring has ordered the region once under the domain of the uh, Iberian Union to be balkanized into some half a dozen military revoltings, most of whom are led by members of Hans Spado's faction or members of the New Guard or the military high command. Also affect the dynamics of the armed forces remains to be seen. The Iberians have proven themselves unworthy of self determination. Typical. Mr. Schmidt Blom Falca AAS. Oh. That would be very cool to have. But we're lagging because we've got to release like 27,000 different uh, small little nations. Ooh, so, oh, we can actually research this immediately. Screw it, why not? Ooh, spy planes, why well, never use those? Oh my god, I hate this so much. Franz Bush, Karl Molinari, Van den Busch, Castellin, Hitzfeld, Portugal's Portugal, Zerbal, Andalusin, Hirschfeld. Oh, you're also a general too. You must have a terrible life trying to do everything here that we want you to do, but whatever. 
Um, I don't want to lose these guys, so you guys do all this or something. Just train. It's fine for now. Let the rest of the army over here to deal with it. You'll be fine. Alright, go and loot them. Ice battle promoted, very nice. Under naval combat. Very good. A better medicine. For the next Shona reads the order one by one, his hands trembling, his jaw clenched so tightly, his teeth almost cracked. That bastard, he screams as he looked at the confirmation of what he had been suspecting for a while, even though the documents on his desk are no statement of intents or explicit declaration. A season general such as himself can quickly grasp the subtleties of of such an intricate web of orders and dispatches. One by one, lo officers loyal to him have been sent to extremely dangerous areas with barely enough forces and supplies to prevail at the high cost. Most of indeed one, others many others, had perished like true heroes of the German people, as Goring never tired to proclaim to the masses, only to be replaced by officers who swore their allegiance to that idiot. The desk trembles as the general slams his fist on it, but soon burning rage turns into cold need for revenge. A smirk makes its way on the man's aged face. Oh, hey man, you shouldn't have done that. He amuses as he collects the documents and calls for his attendant. Carl makes several copies of the documents and have them sent to the members of the Oba Commando. The important reports on enemy activities, and all should study them with utmost attention. As the man salutes and leaves, Schoenig chuckles, already tasting the results of his mo move. While none of the papers directly accuse a bastard of having killed German officers loyal to the militarists, they will be enough to uh, paint him as a poor commander who makes some very poor choices. And the German military has no place for incompetence. They'll pay for that in due time. Hey, we're 6,000 now. Two at a time. Fish. Cruiser for cruiser. As we're beating out the French. It's a good day. Do we not... Do we not do fall blow? Oh! Wait, why did this... Uh-oh. Oh god, things are uh, smashing into each other. Uh huh. Why did this unlock now then? Oh, this is a bug. This is definitely a bug. So remember about these, please go ahead. This is not good. They're Burgundian method, huh? Fight for your freedom. This is not good. A multi front invasion? Oh god, I'm glad we didn't do this one. Infantry soft attack would increase by 6%. Oh, but special forces goes up by 6%. Let the Abe run wild. That'd be really cool. Ahead. From Algar to Marrakesh. Best tra training man can find. Yeah, that wouldn't have been very good. Ah, experience losses won't be. Uh, so we don't really need it though. So, from Bordeaux to Madrid. In all honesty, we didn't need any of this extra stuff. North African connections, huh? But the Peninsula reunited. A divided Iberia has caused much too much instability and turbulence in Europe. Franco and Salazar were a wiser could have united Iberia to avoid such endless conflicts, but without proper guidance, chaos and quickly chaos quickly strode back and consumed these two Cadillo's success. And only thanks to the Reich's move, order has been restored on the Iberian, Iberian Peninsula. As a result of such a history, the Reich has made the decision that the Iberian Union will be restored by us. Being the protector of Europe will take the responsibility to maintain peace and order in Iberia. Guarded by the Wehrmacht, the time the Union will last as long as the Reich itself. This time it will last as long. Oh, this is, why did they, huh? Recruit uh, remaining partisans. For decades, several partisan organizations have been active in Iberia and caused many troubles with governments, and even the Caldillos cannot pacify those guerrillas in their land. Though their activities dropped a lot after their divorce, they could still be a serious problem for our rule in Iberia if we don't find a proper way to deal with them. Though many have suggested that these partisans are dangerous to our rule and need to be eliminated, the fear believes such ideas are too unrealistic and naive, since even local governments cannot achieve that instead. He believes that we can use some partisan organizations who aren't hostile to the Reich to fight for more dangerous enemies and keep peace across the peninsula. It's obvious that his genius will grant us the stability of Iberia. Uh, in Vinayam Viam Aut Fasium. With the annexation of the Iberian Peninsula complete, it's now time for us to set up a. Oh, 13 destroyers. Functional administration of the conquered lands. The first issue plaguing our newly established military vault vault tongues is logistics. Months of bombing and fighting left the Iberian infrastructure not the most developed one to begin with, in a pitiful state, of course. Roads and railroads are filled with holes and craters. Bridges were demolished by retreating Iberian forces, and the dos docking facilities were abandoned after we enacted our embargo. With a sorry state of affairs, our garrisons lament delays in supplies while partisans and rebel strike from forests and hills to steal weapons from our convoys. Should this keep going, we might face worse problems than a couple of terrorist attacks. Therefore, a comprehensive initiative must be taken in order to improve the state of Iberian infrastructure. We have several choices, each with its own caveats. On one hand, 
we can concentrate on military of Alton Castilian and make it the infrastructural hub of Iberia with its central position. Encompassing the former capital of Madrid would be a cheap solution with great potential results, but Rex Commissar Hitzfeld is known for supporting Spada, which could further aggravate the infighting among the Iberian subdivisions. On the other, we can equally spread the development efforts between all administrative units. This would be more costly and less efficient, but no one would complain about lack of funds, finally. We can simply forego land infrastructure and have everything delivered from Germany by ship by improving the northern Iberian port facilities to be the safest choice, but also the most expensive, and our finances aren't looking good at the moment. Open Castellin. Slave organization will decrease. Equally spread the cost and benefits. Bring yourselves much better. And we'll equally spread them, why not? We'll be generous this time. Oh, we lost a couple convoys. Still trying to beat up the French. Go figure. Communications blackout. When the Iberian Union still, still existed, the relationship between ordinary Spanish and Portuguese people had never become as close as a propaganda work depicts. And now, after the Iberian divorce and a conquest of these two nations, their opinions towards each other are even more complicit than before. A failed marriage is always a tragedy for people inside and outside the family, and the Reich is willing to do them a little favor. If you each... If you find each other hard to get along with, then fine, you don't need to see or hear them now, for the Reich will cut all connections between you and your former partner. From now on, the Spanish and Portuguese will be living in the harmony provided by the Reich and no longer hear the disturbing words from the other parts of Iberia. By forcing harsh controls between the borders of the military of uh, Altums, we can easily mop up the remaining partisans and, more importantly, take, uh, take their equipment, making dreams come true. Now that Iberia is under complete control, we have also regained authority over the Gibraltar Dam. Ooh. Uh, this isn't as good as it sounds, because the Iberian government, after we abandoned it in the first economic crash, was never able to complete the gargantuan structure, and now we have to shoulder its maintenance costs once again. Which I think wasn't it taken out of the mod because Italy looks normal now. Since our economy isn't in the best state right now, we have several alternative ways to ensure it doesn't sink our budget. The first is to let all costs fall completely until Melita Vavaltung on the Andalusine. Since they are the closest to the dam, we can simply let Rex Commissar von Hushfeld handle all the expenses, however. He'll get really angry about having to pay for all from his already meager budget, and he's high in short his priority list. And another choice would be to split the cost between the, the all of the Iberian military of Altungs, just the way it was when Iberia was united. This would be less controversial, but, but all Rex Commissars would complain at least some. Finally, we can simply take the responsibility for Hitler's dreams and short of the cost on our own. Everyone would be relieved, but this would mean an incredible weight on our already strained budget, and with our future plans for expansion, we don't have much money to spare. I kind of want this one, but I'm not going to increase inflation. It's already terrible as is. Actually, we could have gotten a reduction. Maybe we should have taken that one. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, do we lose a division here? That's not good. Huh. Um, You guys are not done yet. You still got to get to South Paris. Because guess what? We got to go to North Paris eventually, too. Baskinland, huh? God. Loot the East. Well, communications blackout is still good to do. Widespread well, looting in Iberia. Ever since the first garrisons were installed, reports of conscripts integrating their pay with small bribes and petty theft were a regular occurrence, if no minor one. In the last couple weeks, though, however, reports have grown more and more worrying from refusing to pay for the beers or taking a chicken from a grumbling farmer. Uh, reports speak of stolen artworks from museums, uh, nightly incursions into rich households, and even rape and murder. The population is protesting against the situation, and despite our efforts to crack down on the dissenters, they defy our authority. If we don't quickly find a solution, terrorists will find sort of a fertile soil for new recruits, and we'll have to face a much more powerful enemy. Several monks of Oba Commando reacted harshly at the news. They requested an immediate suppression of all shameful conduct. In their statement of the, what they call the true Prussian discipline in the Iberian garrisons, was well, the most sensible solution. This would also anger the local garrisons, whose pay is quite already low. A halfway solution would be eliminating the looting to the military of the of Portugal, Galazin, and Andalusia. Since they are much more controllable, it will be easier to repress any revolt there and keep the garrisons there happy. Finally, we could also refrain from taking any action and let the looting continue. While a barbarian measure, looting ensures their soldiers station they don't complain about their salaries. This might further enrage the Iberian population, but the archivists will surely thank us for it. Punish the criminals. Decrease influence. What is influence like right now? Is medium. Power is high. Approval is very high. Limiting the looting to manageable zones. Decrease loyalty. If they didn't want to have to deal with this, they should have not lost the war. You know, it's simple mathematics. Don't lose the war, and you'll be fine. Not good. Everything in southern Paris? I think we have, yes. 
Just butcher them. I remember back in my day, Brittany was still a thing. Literally just butchering them. Oh, I love it. It's funny how TNO has just gone away from normal Hoi mechanics somewhat. I mean, it's much more story driven than anything else. But even the French need to die a third or fourth time in history. So good. Four hundred four billion, huh? Oh, look at that. Military of Alton Occitanin. And Military of Alton Galin. Guderian. Oh, he must be a son. Beautiful. Because I know for a fact you guys are going to go over there eventually, but you guys can just kind of hang out there for now. Our GDP shrunk. Oh, terrible. I know. Well, the communications blackout is important. Because we got to get Italy as well. The final straw. Oh. Um. Should be able to just uh, bypass this. I think, right? Well, let's see. Well, this all glitched up on us. Um, looks like I'm going to, have to do this. So if you don't know about this one, because we've already technically already done this, please go right ahead. Um, this might be some of the old stuff here and some of the new stuff. I'm not sure. So there's that. Uh, loot the east. In the east of the peninsula, the Catalans have been shouting for their independence for many years. In German people's eyes, they aren't as noble and brave as the Basques, since all they've done is complaining about the oppression from Madrid, and they don't even have the courage to form their own resistance organization like the ETA. As a result, while the Basques are receiving a favor treatment from the Reich, the Catalans will pay short roll from us. Their industries and resources will be nationalized by Germany, and every move they take will be closely watched. If they dare to do anything about the permission from us, they're going to face some serious consequences. In the past, they said they don't like to be oppressed by Spain, but only from now on, they're going to be realizing what that real oppression means. Call to the Basques. Um, our initial plan about the total civil war failed, but that doesn't mean that all of our efforts were in vain. The Basques have been oppressed by Madrid for a very long time, and the hatred towards Spain is getting stronger even in these days. If we can get their support via some propaganda and diplomatic methods, their struggle in the north will do us a great favor in our war against the Iberian Union. To achieve this, a propaganda article has been drafted by our diplomats. People of Basque, please hear our voice. You are one of the bravest nations of the world and a close kin of we Germans ethnically. But for years you've been humiliated, tortured, and oppressed by the Spanish bastards. We do admire your unyielding determination to fight against it, but you cannot win this war on your own. Now please answer to our call of friendship and join this holy war against the Iberian Union. You will win your rifle plates in our new, or new order once we succeed. Call to the Catalans. Our initial plan about total civil war, um, well, we read that one earlier. At the west of the Iberian Peninsula, the Catalans have been oppressed by Madrid for a long period of time, and they're willing to do anything for their independence. Though they've been polluted by decayed values and ever will be enslaved by us according to our post-war plan, we can still make a temporary alliance with them before the fall of the Iberian Union. To achieve this, a propaganda article has been uh, drafted by our diplomats. People of Catalonia, we know you may not like us, but it does not matter right now. Please think about it if there's any benefit for you to reject our proposal of alliance and friendship. Accept our invitation, fight alongside the German Reich against your enemies in Madrid, and you have the freedom you've been created for decades. And as the most sag sagacious nation in Southern Europe, you won't forsake such a precious chance, will you? And work in the West. Beyond the mountains, the western part of the Iberian Peninsula is the furthest part of the Western Europe, which means rebels it will be much harder to cra track and crack down. Believe the long distance from Berlin can stop us from efficiently, efficiently governing them. Some resistance groups have risen and taken up arms to fight against us. But for the Reich, every inch of land with the borders precious and must be watched and ruled seriously. We'll never keep a close eye due to the long distance, but on the contrary, even more efforts will be taken to make our control of the peninsula can be controlled as well as other parts in Europe. No one can get away from the Reich's fists, even if they live in the remotest corner of the earth. And call to the Portuguese. There are plenty of Portuguese nationals prepared to work with us, and we just have to give them a chance. Unlike the fools of the Basque and Catalonia, our agents of Portugal brought us good news after our ultimate uh, victory. There are a number of Portuguese who hate the Iberian Union as much as uh, us have expressed their wills about cooperation, and according to the Abwehr, this number could even be higher if we continue to make a propaganda with towards them. Well, the Portuguese on our side, the Iberian Union will collapse to achieve this. A propaganda article has, has been drafted by our diplomats. People of Portugal, 20 years ago, the Spanish lied to you, cajoled you into the so called Iberian Union. But 20 years have passed, we know that you have threw through their true ambitions under the name of it. Are you an equal partner of Spain or a low servant in their eyes? You must already have gotten the right answer in your head. And now the German Reich has come to give you a hand. 20 years ago, the lie started with the fear of a fabricated German invasion. And now, after 20 years, you can end with a real German invasion of Spain. Too late. Fortune is smiling on you, and please take this chance to correct your mistakes in the past, for you won't have another better one ever. But no one answered. Hearing our call of friendship, many Iberians, uh, 
contact us and express their expectation for an alliance with the Reich. The Reich, of course, appreciates the good intentions, but it's a shame that luck doesn't stand on this, their side, even though they made the right choice. Considering the current situation in Iberia, they're not needed anymore. And since they're definitely not racial brothers of the Reich, there's no reason that they should enjoy any privilege that other Iberian people shouldn't have. Any promises we made before will be defined as fabricated and invalid, and will be treated like all other descenders and the Iberian scums. All must understand that no one can bargain with the German Reich, and total submission is the only way we can take. After dealing with those bar bastards, all memories of our promises will disappear with them. No one is going to know what happened during the conquest of Iberia, and all Iberians will live equally in fear from this time on. No more games. Unless it's Toy 4. The ghost of terrorism has been haunting around Iberia since the conclusion of the Spanish Civil War, as different organizations directly fighting against the government all over the peninsula. And the Iberian government, due to their inefficiency and corruption, never really suppressed those terrorists. Consequently, the strength of those organizations keeps growing and causing more and more troubles every day. Eventually, this prosperity and stability of the Iberian Union was doomed to the constant violence and riots. But even now, we can tell those terrorists that their good old days are gone. Failing to pacify its own realm is a shame for a nation, and we cannot act like those Latin scums. There will be no more stupid childlike games between police and terrorists, for now the real anti-terrorist campaign is going to start. Victory parade foiled by terrorists. Today was supposed to be a day of celebration throughout the Reich, after the uh, final surrender of the Iberian authorities. A uh, victory parade was scheduled to happen today in the presence of the Fuhrer. Hermann Göring himself saluted the victorious soldiers from the royal, former royal palace, and then the motorcade led by Feld Marshal Ferdinand Schona paraded along the streets of Madrid. One of the said streets was... Cal de Serrano, where the American embassy was located in order to show our adversaries the glory of the German nation, but tragedy struck along the way. A few mere meters before reaching the embassy in front of the church of San Francisco de Borgia, the ground itself exploded. A tremendous detonation enveloped the vehicle leading the motorcade in the force of the blast throwing it against the building more than 20 meters from the road, and it was only by pure chance that Feld Marshal Schoener survived. His car passed in second position after its engine had a small problem, and despite being involved in the explosion, it was spared the brunt of the detonation, and the general himself only suffering flesh wounds from glass shards as the window broke from the shockwave. Preliminary investigations report that a partisan cell dug a tunnel underneath the road from a small apartment they had rented weeks before the parade. The landlord, interrogated by the Abwehr, showed them documents provided by the partisans. That they had presented themselves as art students and justified the amount of rubble coming from the basement as part of the sculpture they were working on. Whether what he says is true or not, one thing is certain. Our victory has been marred today, and many of the Opel Commando fear this is but a glimpse of what will happen from now on. Why did the bastard sur uh, We are happy he survived! Close the dam. In history, Gibraltar as a gateway of the Mediterranean Sea is a key goal of global trade for Mediterranean nations, which include many of the former and future enemies. Considering this, one reason of our Iberian conquest is to control the lifeline of Italian international transportation and trade so that we can weaken their economy a lot and even make it collapse without a military campaign. And now, as the whole Iberian Peninsula has been firmly controlled by the Reich, we're able to cut the throat of the Italians and destroy their ability to sustain themselves. Today, according to the director from Germania, several ships from the Kriegsmarine shall block entrance and exit for all non-German ships, with orders to shoot unless all Mediterranean nations surrender to Germany, either willingly or by force. While the official reason for this is to protect German people, sea vessels, and goods and aggressive and barbaric actions from the Italian sphere, it's clear to see that it's a thinly veiled strategic maneuver from Germany to cut off Italian trade from the Atlantic and hoping it will cause their economy to plateau. While well, it will definitely be the death of Italo-German relations, Goring simply laughs at the matter, as he plans to be visiting the new German city of Rome by the end of the year. A concerned friend calls. But old Marshal Ferdinand Schona sat comfortably in his office, a telephone receiver attached to his ear, and a friendly, if uh, somewhat practiced, smile on his lips. Yeah, it's Feld, it's a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure you've heard about a glorious Fur's uh, proclamation, didn't you? A small way. Uh, yes, I completely agree with you. Surely removing all terrorist and partisan activities within three years is the most auspicable policy, but I'm afraid I agree that there is overlooked some details. Uh, yes, of course. He nods a couple times as he writes something on the piece of paper. Indeed, this will surely exacerbate the already difficult situation and military of Avalton Castellin and many others. Yes, yes, I couldn't better put it, mine comrade. Perhaps I could be able to explain your point of view to the Fuhrer. Yeah, of course. I'll be sure to remind him of that in our next meeting. Yes, yeah, so the request for supplies too, of course. I never let a fellow German soldier such as you fighting those terrorists without more than enough men. Thank you for the conversation, mine Freund, but urgent matters await me. I'm sure you understand. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. How goring. As soon as the receiver was down, the general smirked. Everything was going according to plan. Now the next call, there were still some things to do before going to bed. He raised the receiver to his ear once more and composed a number. The smile returned to his friendly practice shade. Max Kumasa von der Lucia? Hello. Oh, it's 1974. My god, we are taking a lot of time to do all this stuff. And we're still growing. Oh, and there goes Prison Heart. There he goes. Goodbye. Raza Barcelona. Oh, raise Raza. Raise Barcelona. Barcelona, the capital of Catalonia, has degenerated into the source of terrorism, political violence, and separatist organizations and leftist activities. 
Oh, look at this guy. All devils on Iberia have made their home here and set out to poison the whole Europe from Catalonia. Such a polluted city is absolutely incompatible with their national socialist doctrine and will be totally raised to the ground to cleanse its sins. Now, Catalans, take one last side of your corrupted home. Adieu, Sagrada Familia. Sadly, you didn't get your people redeemed. Adieu, uh, Hospital de Sant Pau. It's a shame you can save your people's lives, but not their souls. Adieu, Paolo, Palau de la Musica Catalana. From now on, there will only be German military music can be heard in Catalonia. Adieu, the old heart of Catalonia. The Sodom in our age. May all the evils can will die with you in our holy flame of cleansing. Contain the terrorists. Iberia is large, and any attempts to govern the Iberians with only one single political body may lead to low efficiency and failure to maintain local stability, as the Iberian Union has showed us. Luckily for us, from the beginnings of our conquest, we've noticed this problem and set up six different Reichs Commissariats in total, with each one dealing with one specific region of the peninsula. Divide, conquer, and rule over such a strategy is so as old as time itself, and we shall implement it here. In addition, to avoid the possible risk of communication and cooperation between different ethnic groups in Iberia, we need to divide these people with enough caution. Population for each uh, MW must be carefully designed so that each MW may be able to handle their own realm on their own without needs to worry about a total uprising. Through scientific administration, the Reich can gain as much resources and maintain the peace and stability of the Iberian Peninsula. Beautiful. Yeah, I heard the growth a little bit, but helped our debt to GDP ratio. Always vigilant. The conquest of Iberia is indeed a great victory for the Reich, as we did have reasons to celebrate for it. Yet it would be foolish to ignore the threat of other powers in the world that still seek opportunity to weaken our fatherland, especially the OFN and its American master. Each German victory in Europe is a warning of them, and uh, uh, scared of the mighty military power we hold, their subversive activities is getting more and more frequent, and thus our soldiers must stay vigilant enough at any time. For the U.S., the Iberian Peninsula is the westernmost part of Europe, and therefore has great strategic values. Our agents report that secret ships and OFN spies have been setting been sent from their ports to Iberia. Due to its distance from Germania and Iberia, we may not be able to deal with the sudden case as there and as a result, we can only rely on the sense of responsibility of our local occupied forces. All ships that move near our coastline must be cautiously checked and make sure no one sneaks into the Reich, and the security of Europe is in our troops' hands. And I keep forgetting about this too. Not bad. So that concludes Iberia and Russia and Turkey, but Operation Geyserdish. The time has finally come to shift our gaze southward. Our former allies, the Italians, have abandoned us long ago and ran away like cowards and traitors. We'll show them what happens to the traitors to the Reich. They'll be our next target. Just like Geyserdish was once a bringer of fear and terror to the, of the Romans, we shall bring fear and terror to the Italians in choosing a plan. When dealing with Italy, the geography proves to be especially challenging. Covered by the Alps to the north, the deserts to the south, and the Mediterranean all around means that our approach to this invasion will be well planned. As such, the three battle plans have been brought forward by the General Stab. Plan 1 involves a multi layer plan to destroy Italy conventionally. Plan 2 contains various unconventional operations to attack Italy on multiple fronts. And Plan 3 has been put forward by Shore himself and declares that there is no time for fancy maneuvers and that our ground troops have to push through the Alps as fast as possible before the Italians can build up a nuclear arsenal. Oh boy. Can't wait. So, which means this, you guys. You will be the main force leading through from here. Kind of insane, I know. You guys don't have very many forces yet. And you'll be leading the push, the small push, through the Alps and whatnot. From there. You guys, however, will be the group that, uh, well, helps us out the most. Oh, they even have their own thing here. Italian Empire has, uh, quite a few puppet states, don't they? Which we can't get all the way around here, too, so. Um, Algerian Union, huh? They're part of here, too? Okay. Interesting. You'll be part of the African divisions. Um, and honestly, we can't get down here. Which means we might need a naval invade, maybe. Which I really don't want to. I'll be honest. I really do not want to naval invade. Oh, Rex Colony of West Africa. Huh. That's cool. Honestly? We might just send all of you guys here. You go all the way over there. Uh, still building up roads, which is fine and dandy and good and all. Build some there. Build some there. Some radar here. Damp structure here. And maybe a naval base right there, too. Should help out. Quite a bit. Mm, not good. Deficit's not good. Always vigilant. <sighs> Perfidious Italians. Up there. Don't do that one anyways, because we can. Nice. Bit of all that stuff. Obviously, bull rushing our way into it would be my ideal strategy, but we might do that, we might not do that. Because we choose a plan. 
Yeah, it's unfortunate that stuff was all like redone, sort of ish. So. Three days left, huh? Loot Iberia? Of course we will. Using a plan, alright. Should have a little event here to pop up about that in the meantime. New missile designs, the nuclear arms race. Uh, means a constant effort to improve, to overcome, and to adapt. Uh, obviously, our missiles have no exception to this. A fresh investment in new and improved missile designs will ensure our silos can't be taken out before the missiles leave for their counter strike. Choosing a plan, the time has come for Italy to, be, to bend the knee to the Fuhrer. And as such, we must begin preparations to invade the Italian peninsula. The main options uh, uh, contend uh, to invade Italy have presented themselves. We can rely heavily on our air force and navy in order to bombard Italian forces, leaving them crippled and weak towards any sort of opposition. Additionally, we could uh, combine such naval and aerial maneuvers with simultaneous naval invasions, utilizing the soft underside of Italy in order to reduce German casualties. Alternatively, we can always go with the most traditional and straightforward method involving sending our men through the Swiss Alps, showing us personal favorite. Regardless, the choice must, of course, be made. Go through the Alps. I want to go through the Alps, and we'll do that too. You know what? Let's go to the top one. Lufthansa and the Kriegsmarine shall do the best. Let's see what that one's like. Because I know, I'm pretty sure I chose just a bulwark, smash your head through the sink. The tactical approach. Much to the chagrin of General Feld Marshal Schorner, Fyodor Goring, the world's most experienced and greatest military mind, has concluded that the Gross Germanisches Reich can best subdue the Italian threat through thoroughly planned offensives. To make matters worse for the General Feld Marshal, the Fuhrer has explicitly forbidden in tactical nuclear action. Conventional tactics, while unsexy, are apparently less likely to trigger massive retaliation. This does give us a great deal of autonomy, however, and using the Kriegsmarine. All those nuclear subs will need alternative deployments now the big guns are off the table. I went to the Lowlands, and I print it. President of the Nation. Huh. Interesting. Because over here it's 1970 to get to 1980. Oh, 75. Oh, yeah, we'll do this one. Reduce our military spending by a tiny bit would be very nice, too. Over there. New generation of missiles. So that the Reich's missile technology could use an upgrade in new designs is not a question in the Council. It's a unanimous certainty. Nevertheless, the process itself has turned into a squabble of conflicting viewpoints. A significant portion of the Council believes that. Although improving our outdated missiles would be a boon and, in effect, a necessity in order to remain in parity with the U.S. and Japan, rushing ahead to update all of them would only lead to a waste of funds in the future as missile technology advances rapidly. Yet another part of the Council thinks that having a stockpile of long-range weapons fall behind in terms of capability would lead to other two superpowers preying on a supposed weakness to project power across the globe, and that a rapid modernization attempt would now prevent any future opportunities for the Reich's enemies to pounce on them. In the end, the bitter divide of the Council's reached Fear Goring's ears, and the council has asked him to make the final decision. Every moment we waste is a danger, and so the missile must be upgraded quickly. The results of our research will become available in ten, roughly 10 months. Sloan City wins a nuclear race. Ah, screw that. Let's do that one. Release a Kraken. Surrounding the boat. Stealthy approach. Get and run. Strength is everything. Capital ships. Focus on preserving our navy, making sure we don't lose any of our ever so important ships. Time to strike. No one to help them. Smash reports, infiltration tactics. Time's come. Or invade the lowlands. Sweeping the seas. Liberian launch pad. Turkish getaway. No gateway. Strike the boot. Secure the skies. I should do like that one. Ooh, this is good too. Behind the enemy lines, limited combat. But hold secure board men versus unprecedented invasion. Description factor increase. Rule the ways. Infantry defense and attack will be good. Air superiority too. Find the money. Destroy the Italians. Help from an old friend. The big push. I think I want to do the center one. Invade the lowlands. Combined arms warfare has repeatedly been shown to be far more effective than a co more concentrated use of only one section of the armed forces. We have the Hare, Lupov, and Kriegsmarine, so why don't you guys all throw them in tandem and overwhelm the Italians? Instead of focusing on just our landing spots, which would allow Italy to amass its weak defenses in one place, we can pulverize their entire worthless country and force them to continually guess where our next strike will occur. With this strategy, you will undoubtedly crush the enemy from land, sea, and air. And I forgot about these guys here, too. So. The tactical approach. 
sweeping the seas before we can even think of initiating our naval invasion of the Italian mainland. There are many threats looking in the Mediterranean Sea which must be eliminated. We're referring to, of course, the pest known as the Regia Marina, who likely have a plethora of coastal defense ships guarding the Italian coast, as well as a maze of naval mines ready to destroy our troop convoys and naval vessels. Therefore, we must prepare a major naval operation to which we will allocate many of our best ships that are cleared out of the sea so that we may finally invade and be rid of those Italian bastards. The needed supplies will be diverted and the men will be trained immediately so we may begin the attack. Um, I like this one, but this one gives eight. Remerstadt, uh, Italian launch pad. Turkish gateway. If you don't know about this one, please go ahead. The Iberian launch pad. There are two options, Iberia and Turkey. Clearly, Iberia is a superior choice to launch our invasion from, as they are simply much nearer to Italy than Turkey. Iberia's close proximity to our destination means there will be far fewer opportunities for our convoys to be harassed on the way there, but preparing for the invasion and constructing port facilities will be substantially harder due to eastern uh, Spain's rocket train. The choice is up to us. Or Her Her Herman Goring, strike the boot. No more waiting, no more planning. The time has come to send forth the men and the ships and launch a full-scale invasion of Italy. Let the Italians tremble in fear at their might, nothing can stop us. And then secure the skies. Key to achieving our objectives on the ground campaign is the establishing of German aerial supremacy above the Italian skies. Since so Italy is our current priority, we'll deploy and redirect as many Luftwaffe squadrons to the region as it takes to guarantee that any Italian plane that even attempts to take off will be swiftly and methodically obliterated. Now, as much as I like this one, if you're into this one, please go ahead. I like behind enemy lines. For centuries, the Ops served as ultimate natural fortification against invading forces. While it is true that many famous invasions still have managed to conquer and pass through the Alps, it would be a great waste of time, many men, and resources to do so ourselves. No doubt the Italians are prepared for an assault on their alpine defenses, waiting to cause us outrageous and disproportionate uh, uh, casualties. Therefore, we will bypass them altogether with a massive airborne assault behind the Italian lines. All Fosch and Miega. Oh, last time. Uh, well, units will work swiftly and help us to exploit the breakthrough they will help us create. Oh. Yes, please. Oh, God. Our tanks are trying to advance in here. Nice, Bosnia helps in support of the Governator de Governatorato del Golfo. They completely left their defenses up next to what used to be France completely open. Good job. And Monaco will fall. As we secure the skies, of course. Thank you, Monaco. Didn't think you'd survive for very long, a foothold secured. We've done it, of course, to successfully land on the shores of uh, Mezzogiorno and are preparing to further advance into the Medi Italian heartland at this very moment. Much like with the initial invasion of the USSR 20 odd years ago, we've already kicked in the door and now we need to bring the whole Rhine structure crashing down. Soon enough, those Italian traders will be wiped off the face of the map of the earth. Forward men, the traders are about to fall each day. Our brave and powerful forces reach closer and closer to Rome. Uh, these foolish toga war wearers who audaciously style themselves as if they are the successors of the Roman Empire were more than right to fear us, as we shall never relent. Soon enough they will be forced to watch their whole, as their precious Colosseum and their holy Sistine Chapel burn to the ground. Oh wow, we actually have more stuff to do here. Well, how bad are we looking here? Transport helicopters and attack helicopters. Let's go with 10. Another 10. Not great, not bad. Yeah, it is what it is. Seven thousand minutes we lost forty thousand, that's quite a few. We've killed off at least a hundred two hundred thousand though, so But it's kinda of what you expected against Italy. So Oh. Now we caught them all in. There you go. Yeah, that's better for everybody. As is going to like extremely hard. Wow. Losses 300,000, losses 51,000. That's why we use medevac companies. Go to manpower 4 million. Wow.
We have a lot of man of political power too. I wish I could convert political power to money. That'd be really nice. Wow, this is super laggy. But so far, I'm enjoying this campaign. I think you guys are as well, as I can tell from the viewership numbers, which is fantastic. Can't wait for the next uh, TNO update. Mine got. Mine got. I know that as soon as I might fade and fade out, that it would go back to normal immediately. Hey. And here we're at, everybody. Uh, the lag is finally over. Horrible, horrible lag. And uh, we're still trying to conquer everything around here. What about what else is new? Oh, nice. Forward man is completed too. And it's almost July. As we're trying to flood straight into Italy. Having a good old time. Ah. Five degree change, 0.1%. Could be worse. Happy July now, everybody. Where are the Italian divisions? Well, there's only 11 of them left, max. It's not bad. Um, three battleships, that's a lot of battleships. Holy crap, we definitely need more uh, uh, cruisers. Oh, advanced attack sub holes. Advanced destroyers. Destroyers. Cruisers are important. I'll keep building stuff up first. Keep building up on roads. Roads are important as well. And a Vatican City, yes. Naples, in Toronto, Palermo. German Leviathans are good. And battleship for battleship. I'm quite worried about the Italian Navy, so why don't we do this? Start to get our ships in here. Mm, there is the Italian Navy. Now there's our Navy here too. It looks like we're just decimating them. Nice. Toronto. Hello. Oh, we lost two destroyers. That's not good. Stop losing destroyers. God dang it. There we go. See, I gotta tell them to stop losing destroyers. Oh, it's like you're in here. Well, we lost four destroyers in that one versus oh, quite a few enemy ships. Not bad overall. Task Force. What's going on here? Two convoys. Oh crap! Come on. We lost a sub and two destroyers. They sunk twelve destroyers. They lost twelve destroyers in uh, cru light cruiser, which is good. Nice. Nice. Oh my god. Holy crap. Nice. Good old results. Love them. Can we get to Palermo, please? Someday, maybe? Retires wins. Oh god, all those convoys. Oh god, oh god. It's a bloodbath. Oh, he's short a carrier too. Another light cruiser, a couple more light cruisers. Oh Jesus. Beautiful. They're almost ready to capitulate, so. And they've lost it all again. 29. Battleship for battleship. My god. And the German Armada. Come back here and just kind of hang out. 
You need to have more funds. Or resources or equipment to do well. Straight to Palermo, please. Hello. Prepare faster, ding dongs. There we go. We got it early. Oof. At least they have no nuclear weapons. The war with the Italian and their many puppets is finally over. Our men have fought long and hard, and the work has finally seen fruition. We've won. The balance of power in Europe has dramatically shifted once again, of course. Uh, we are d without doubtless peers. Uh, we are the strongest nation by far on the continent. Much needs to be taken care of now, but the hard part is over. The traitorous Italians have been brought down to their knees. Now only our greatest rivals remain to be destroyed. I think I want to go through Africa and Asia first before we get to... I mean, South America, too. But we definitely need to go to Africa first. And we springboard our way into Brazil that way, which would be fantastic. Oh, what is this? Available war goal. Oh. Oh, we're down here, too. Look at that. Ah, oh, Militev Abaltung Arabin. Beautiful. Look at the Knights Pact. Oh, we're down here, too. Look at all this. Oh, that's beautiful. That's amazing. Ah, uh, just destroyed all sorts of Italian stuff. Destroyed three carriers in that one battle. I wish we could just collect and keep them, but, you know, whatever. Oh my god. Hey, we're... Oh, we are in Africa. So, Rex Colony Sudan Gross Abyssin. Abyssinian. Let's buy then. Oh, Tactical Mission Congo. Afrikanische... Afrikaner Abwehrfront. What the fosh? Forschner? And Becker. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. Balkans are back. Hey! Welcome back, boys and girls. GRWI, there's no concerns here. As we're doing the German Armada. Very nice. Um. Ah, War Plan C. First, we pacified the Shattered Reich. Then, we established our grip upon Europe, recreating the reality of Adolf Hitler's vision. Now, we stand victorious once again, having achieved the true dream of Adolf Hitler. Without the imperfections of fickle allies that betray us and the Russian remnants to harass our armies. Now, after so much war, we are finally coming to the finale of the play, the true NC. Only the nuclear powers and those small states that stand between us remain the SS state of Burgundy, the decadent democracy of America, and the J Empire of Japan. They will be stronger foes than any we faced thus far, but they're still on to mention regardless of how many nukes and guns they pointed at us. We march to ultimate victory. See Kyle! Can we take out at least the rest of Africa? I would love to be able to take out the rest of Africa and destroy the Boers for betraying us. And Oh, these guys are in the OFN. That's not good. Um, we're looking pretty good, though. Pretty awesome overall. We definitely need to get to Brazil, though. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow when we will fully commence with War Plan C. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.